I am very happy to say that I've recently read two of the best books I've read so far this year. And I'm here today to convince you to read both of them when they release. What can I say? It's my job. I was just going to tack this video onto my monthly reading wrap up, but I can't do it. I need to highlight these two books separately. They deserve their own spotlight. In fact, I am thinking about doing this more often, dissecting the monthly wrap up videos that I do here on this channel and do something new. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so, hey, it's a really great time to subscribe if you're not already, so I can just be that extra booktuber in your subscription feed who makes your TBR even bigger. So back to the books I'm talking about today. I read them both back to back. Um, both blew me away, though they couldn't be like any different from each other. And now whatever book that I read next is absolutely ruined. It never even had a chance. <laughs> so let's talk about that first one. And that is Starling House by Alex Iharo. Oh yeah, I'm coming in hot today. This is a book that I think you're going to see everywhere when it releases in October. And I'll just say it now. Yes, this is the perfect book for your spooky fall TBR. Go ahead get the plastic skeletons, pumpkins, and haunted house movies out now because you'll be dripping in black and orange after hearing my review for this. I knew by the first few pages that this was going to be addicting. Sometimes you just know like, yep, this, this right here is a five star read. And it was. I can with certainty describe this book as very house moving castle but instead of a castle it's a creepy old house with a personality of its own and instead of fantasy it's like modern day but it still has that like whimsy feel and by all means it still is fantasy but not like as fantasy as house moving castle so our main character opal is your typical 26 year old trying to get by she works at tractor supply lives in a motel and is just trying to help her brother get out of eden kentucky though his education has him stuck here but she's kind of stuck here too she's always had these dreams about Starling House, a creepy old manor that people of Eden, Kentucky consider the curse of the town, the stain that can't be removed. And she relates to this feeling as the people of this town don't like her either. So she feels a connection because of this. So every night when walking home from work, she passes Starling Place and there's always a single light on in one of the windows. So she gets curious and through a series of events, meets the last remaining heir to Starling House, who I pictured as like a very emo looking figure. And she gets a job as a caretaker there for some faster cash. Cozy horror is also a really good descriptor for this. Whether you like scary books or you don't, I think you're going to love this. It's just spooky enough to quench my horror cravings, but not so spooky that someone is going to have nightmares. And the whimsical, magical, mysterious feel to the story um, really helps dilute that. And what adds even even more depth to the story even more is we get the POV of Arthur Starling, the caretaker, the last warden of Starling House. And I really thought that this was a really clever add-on to touch base with the reader that this wretched character that we're supposed to fear has feelings and emotion and is fighting an invisible war on his own. I love this. It's in my top five reads of the year. It's the most perfect fall read that you can imagine. I wouldn't be surprised if this was in some book boxes. So run, don't walk if those are announced. All right, so let's uh, move on to the second book that I read right after finishing that one. The Hexologist by Josiah Bancroft. My heart grew two sizes the day I found out Josiah Bancroft was releasing another book. A brand new fantasy outside of the Tower of Babel series, a series that consisted of four books. I was filled with absolute glee when more details came out about the Hexologist and I became even happier when I got the opportunity to review this one early for you guys. And as soon as I started reading it, I got those Sin Lina Sin feelings, though I did want um, this to distinguish itself apart from his previous books. Josiah Bancroft's writing is still so recognizable and unique, and it can absolutely throw a new reader off, but it made me happy. I am a Bancroft veteran at this point, <laughs> since this is my fifth book by him. You have to go into this book expecting insanely detailed writing. It's very posh, very indignant and smart. Um, kind of like our main characters. <laughs> Anytime I read a book by Josiah Bancroft from now on, I have to have a dictionary next to me. So we are quickly introduced to, well, the hexologist, a husband and wife pairing, which by the way, the banter between our two main characters was just so funny and lovely. Husband and wife comedy, like to the max. Not in like a bickery, complainy sort of way either. They have the perfect companionship. If you guys could recommend me any more like husband and wife romances, because I, I hate romance, but I'm realizing that maybe I 
I like romance when the couple have already established a relationship. Maybe I just don't like reading the, the beginnings and like the flirty part. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, they are informed by the king's secretary that the king has not been himself. In fact, he seems on the verge of madness and he's begging for their help as they have consulted with medical professionals who are stumped. So why not ask the two people who deal with magical mysteries? makes sense. Plus, apparently someone is claiming to be the king's son, so just another hard task to add to the list. They reluctantly accept, but not without consequences as it seems someone is trying to stop them from finding answers. So not only is hexology used clearly to help them with the mystery, but they have all kinds of magical stuff in their arsenal, like a bag that has a portal in it to some like storehouse so they can like pull out artifacts and charms. It's very Mary Poppins like. I did have like a hard time pinpointing like a time period that this world feels like or feels inspired by but I got like 1920s vibes and I got the same steampunk feel as Tower of Babel. Bancroft definitely extended that here which I didn't mind. It works so well in this environment. So while um, the earliest pages do start out slow it reminded me of bear with me here it reminded me of an onion in the best kind of way because i hate onions in that every layer i peeled back aka every page that i turned added more and more depth eventually growing into like the best version of the idea here at the heart of it of at the heart of the story and i was getting it i was understanding it i'm so happy that i read this i'm so happy i can recommend this to all of you i absolutely loved it five out of five stars five out of five stars. These both are great. And I hope to have enticed you to read these when they come out. This comes out in September, September 26th. This comes out in October. So that's where I'm at right now with my previous two reads. Now I know I could have read other books <laughs> that come out sooner and I'm probably more obligated to read, but these two, specifically Starling House, were calling out to me and I'm so glad that I can now wholeheartedly recommend both to you. Now I will go ahead and um, show you what I plan on reading next. And if you are a true fan of mine, then that means you already watched my August TBR and know the answer because you're the main character. I'm probably well into this by the time this video goes live, but Masters of Death will be my next read. Again, another very fall sounding read, but oh well, I'm totally sick of summer anyways, so I'm just like building up that fall recommendations for <laughs> early for you. I also still need to read Thornhedge, but I mean, that'll be easy. This thing is a, a tiny little bugger. <laughs> I will have no problem reading this in like a day or two, which is probably why I keep putting it off. I mean, I tend to put off easy tasks. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know which one you're most excited about, Starling House or The Hexologist. Also, you don't have to choose one. You can choose both. I would love to know. Like this video if you liked. It really helps me out. Uh, again, leave a comment down below. Um, that also really helps me out. It helps push my videos out into the algorithm, which I immensely appreciate. Um, so until we meet again, happy reading.